Hey YouTube, we are here again as the Drunk Capitalist and I have a story for you. So as you guys know, Carvana is one of those car companies where you can have an ease of buying cars. But one thing we know about cars, car dealerships, and just car selling and buying in general is that it is generally very, very shady. There's always a problem, something's going on. As I reported before, people are paying upwards of $700 a month on cars alone. But today we have a special story about Carvana, a woman's experience. People have been complaining about Carvana for the past two to three years to be exact. It's supposed to be easy, but most people are saying it's a nightmare. Some people are saying they had a good deal, but it's kind of like trying to buy something out of a vending machine, but you have no idea how long the snacks in that vending machine have actually been there. Or you ever try to buy something in a vending machine and it, you, you, know, you purchase it and it looks like it's about to come down, but it gets stuck. That's pretty much what most people are going through right now with Carvana and their situation. So let's get right into this story. The used car company with the eye-catching ads featuring a vending machine filled with cars. You've probably seen the commercials promising to drive you happy. But as Les Trump reports, not all of their customers are happy. Carvana will drive you happy. It's the company that specializes in selling used cars online. Did I tell you I bought our car from Carvana? Yeah, ma. It was so easy. But today, some customers say their car buying process was anything but easy. Carvana makes it look so easy, but really it just became this insane, extremely awful nightmare. I'll put it to you like this. It is technically supposed to be easy because it's an online experience. You can shop for the cars, see the price, and you pay which for what you see unlike other traditional dealerships where you go into a showroom and they will say anything to anybody to see what they can get somebody to pay for a car there is no set price when it comes to a actual traditional dealership you literally get whatever you pay for and you pay whatever you think you 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 think the car is worth or whatever the dealer is forcing you to pay even if it doesn't add up. Now, online car buying, as far as Carvana, because they sell used cars, is completely different than the process that you have over at Tesla, who has revolutionized the idea of actually buying cars online. Now, a Tesla process is completely different, whether it's used or new, because Tesla sells Teslas. That's it, <laughs> okay? They said, new and used Teslas and custom Teslas, that is it. So their experience is gonna be completely different than one from a Carvana because it doesn't involve anyone else except the customer and the business. Now, Carvana involves someone selling a car, Carvana, and someone buying a car. That right there should already signal to you what the issue is gonna be. During Alicia Evans flew all the way from Sioux Falls, South Dakota to Phoenix, Arizona to buy this Mazda sedan from one of Carvana. I think that's insane. Number one, just quickly, I think it's insane to be flying from city to city to buy a Mazda. <laughs> okay. To me, that's crazy. I understand if it's like a really one-off car, like a Corvette, like a, a VO2 or something like that, or something that's really special that maybe they only made a hundred cars i would understand why uh someone would fly to another state to check out the car and examine it and, and then bring it back to their home state because there's only a hundred available but for a mazda <laughs> people just don't know what to do with their money obviously mystic vending machines oh my god it was like the most exciting thing to happen to me. But she says all that excitement quickly wore off. They made it so fun, but then all of a sudden, a month after, it was like a nightmare. First, she says there were mechanical problems. The shocks were bad, and then the tires had to be replaced after a month. Then the temporary tags Carvana provided expired, and she says she was unable to register her car. A big problem. So yeah, usually when you buy a car, sorry, it got really sunny in here. Um, the window is just always catching every piece of sun. But yeah, usually when you buy a car, the dealership will handle the license registration and all that stuff with the DMV for you because they're the ones with the 
title of the car. But because Carvana is trying to spit out these cars, buy them, sell them, buy them, sell them, buy them, sell them, they're skipping over a lot of the vital parts that even sleazy dealerships still go through because sleazy dealerships have all these laws, right? That uh, prevent them from, you know, just giving you a lemon, <laughs> we should say. So the car had mechanical problems that should have been fixed before it was even put up for sale, which means Carvana needs mechanics to fix these, to examine these cars, find out what the repairs are before they buy the cars from the sellers. Then they need to, you know, obviously fix all these problems and then sell the car and transport it to whatever Carvana vending machine that they need to transport it to. But I think it's kind of wild for you to be flying from one state to another to go to a car vending machine. I think that's just silly worked as an uber driver and they just told me that they were not responsible she says she was unable to drive for uber and lost her job she's now homeless and living out of this old beat up rv it's completely insane that car for all of that you could have just got the rv and just skip the whole car buying thing because this just that's just crazy is taking the lengths of time they are to process titles and registrations. Attorney Robert P. Coco is suing Carver. They're taking a long time because they don't have the necessary physical interaction with the sellers or the buyers. And thus, if the sellers aren't turning over those, those rights to the cars right away, and Carvana needs to get that car sold, now they're, they're going to, be the, the sleazy car sales people that are selling cars without actually having title to it. So now they're waiting for the sellers to give title to them so that they can now go to the DMV again and give title to the new buyer. It's crazy. And in the fact that they're actually sitting there and skipping this is really, really worrisome. And they should be paying hefty, hefty uh, uh, fines. like. I don't care if I'm a capitalist and I think you should absolutely try to get as much money as possible. There still needs to be rules and laws in place. If you're providing value, you need to deliver that value. If the value is, hey, we find uh, sellers and we deliver you cars at a fair price and no negotiation, you don't have to hassle with the salesman, you don't have to deal with this hassle, I need that experience to be hassle free as advertised, right? There's no point of me having this easy car vending experience, but then a month later, my entire life is flipped upside down. That's insane, it's too crazy. Carvana, alleging Carvana has failed to properly transfer ownership of hundreds of vehicles nationwide. We've been I think it's more than hundreds, it's thousands. With some variation thousands. of this experience. So what's going on here? Multiple lawsuits claim that Carvana takes way too long to transfer a car's registration that proves ownership. And that leaves some drivers vulnerable to being pulled over by police for driving with an expired plate. Some say they've even been falsely arrested for driving a stolen car. Matanya and Nicholas Woods say that's exactly- Because because sometimes it seems like the car is stolen because we, I'm not trying to get into like the the crazy criminal activity that some people do, but um, uh, fake temporary plates are a real thing that criminals use. They make fake temporary plates so that they can go through tolls and commit crimes or do whatever it is that they're doing and they can move the cars around appropriately. Obviously, if you get seen with a fake plate, most cops won't notice or whatever, but if they do, then you're in big trouble. But if you're forcing people to, I uh, think a fake plate only, not a fake plate, but a temporary plate only supposed to last like 30 days or whatever now it's expired even though it's real but that's a big problem if it's expired because you need to have your real plates but you can't get your real plates unless you have title to the car <laughs> like it's just it's just too much and that's why i think that companies tend to scale too fast like i'm not saying that carvana is a bad idea I think that the business is operating very badly. And a lot of times when people, when uh, companies get a lot of investment very quickly, things go in disarray as the company tries to grow and they're unable to create systems of scale that actually 
helps accomplish the actual goal that they're out for. So they end up making a lot of big mistakes and we end up in situations like this where the consumer, the customer, what have you, ends up not getting the true value of the whole business. Like that, that was the whole point of doing business with you is to have a smooth consumer experience that you're offering, but you're not offering that anymore because you've gotten too big. Actually, let me show you guys what I mean by they've gotten too big too fast. So if you look right here, right, you'll see Carvana is worth $10 and nine uh, cents currently. But if you look at its peak at its highest, it was worth $360. So at $360, it's gonna have an, an, a huge, huge valuation for the company, right? And that was back in August of 2021. Huge valuation. Now, this growth started, coincidentally, on March 20th, 2020. It was worth around 20, uh, 2020 it was worth around $29.35. Now, obviously, it was a little bit higher than that. Right before that, it was growing. But then a huge global situation happened March 20. 2020 and ever since then the company has been rising 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 and got a huge huge influx of money um obviously we know the fed has pumped so much money into the economy it it ends up in places it doesn't belong it ends up in businesses that are not ready to grow <laughs> okay they are not ready so and then in august 13 2021 which is when the complaints started piling up then we see um, a really, really quick slide downwards. And now we are at $10 worth, in, even in December, as low as five, $4, $4, as low as $4. <sighs> so what do I wanna say about this? Because they have a business model that does not work yet, they have not figured out how to make it work at the scale that they're at. They got so much money, they got so much attention, they spend so much money on promoting the business, attracting the customers before they even have the ability to, to deliver the actual value that they're trying to sell you. They have been caught over, if we had a huge, because of the huge shortage that happened in that time span as well, they got caught up in the whole, um, a chip shortage situation when it came to cars. There were not enough cars on the market. So the market had a bunch of used cars and not enough new cars, which constricted and put all consumers in, a lot of consumers into the used car market. Carvana is a used car company. What happens with that? A lot more con more buyers, you know, price, price shifts, demand, supply and demand. There's less supply of cars more demand for the cars. Carvana is now buying the cars from sellers at an inflated price, which now means they have to sell those cars to new buyers at an inflated price to create a profit. But they can't hold on to too many cars and they also have, are buying too many cars. So they basically threw themselves into the fire for almost two whole years in order to try to make their business work and it is completely failing. As a capitalist, I believe companies should fail. It's 100% okay for a business to fail. I think the recession of like 2008, the Great Recession, I think that kind of scared people and it kind of had people in their minds that businesses aren't supposed to fail, that entrepreneurs shouldn't fail that if a company has been open for 10 years, it probably won't fail or it shouldn't fail. No, companies fail, it's okay. In fact, I think it's what's best for our economy, for our uh, capitalist system is if companies succeed, then fail. They provide the value of any given time. I think what happens when companies try to hold on to things, it creates so many issues. But a, a company like Carvana, which is like a revolutionary idea, right? 
it just because it's revolutionary does not mean it needs to stick stick around. It's okay if another company comes around that can do the same thing and actually do it and deliver more value and actually do it better, right? Think of the music industry for example. We used to buy CDs and then someone decided that we could do it digitally. So we have uh if you think of the music industry for example, you had companies like LimeWire, Real Player, um Rhapsody that were all trying to stream music to you or have you download music for you to organize your Apple library on your little iPod and things like that. All those companies were fine and dandy. They all did their little things in a niche market, but no one had brought all those things together and actually really solved the problem for the consumer that didn't require the consumer to do hours and hours of work regarding music and libraries, right? But then there were companies who figured it out. Companies that are now the biggest music streaming platforms known to man. They have figured it out for us. So we now pay them to figure it out and they do it, right? And now we don't use LimeWire, we don't use Real Player, we don't use Rhapsody. They came and they went. They were transitional companies. They made their owners rich and their owners were able to move on to other things. We have the same situation with uh companies like uh I want to say social media companies like uh what was it what was it called MySpace that was a transitional company it came it went it failed it's kind of online still but you know regardless no one's using uh uh what do you, what do you call it MySpace no one's using MySpace anymore it was a transitional company it can come go blow up and then immediately fail it's fine let these companies fail because they make mistakes too um that's just how i feel about it and i feel like Carvana as just a company they either need to figure it out fast or they need to close the doors and allow someone else to step in. Uh, let's get back to the story though. In this woods, say that's exactly what happened to them after they paid $26,000 for this four-door Kia Sorento from a Carvana vending machine in Philadelphia. They say the temporary tags kept expiring and they were unable to register their car. Matanya says her husband was pulled over, arrested, and their car was impounded by the police. For $26,000, I got three temporary license plates. That is insane. Going to jail over a car, like they have to, this is what I'm saying, they need to fail because, or they need to fix it or fail because there is no way you're destroying people's lives to this level. It's that's going to jail over buying a car that you actually pay for. <laughs> like, that's too crazy. Husband went to jail. We both lost our job. My credit was ruined. Oh, God. And I still don't even have a car. Today, Nick. They need to sue the brakes off of Carvana. <laughs> sue the brakes off these companies. that Because they don't know what they're doing. They literally just don't know what they're doing. They did not implement a decent system to figure this stuff out. ...faces multiple traffic violations which he says he plans to fight. Carvana denies any wrongdoing. They declined to do an interview, but in a statement, they say they bought and sold over a million cars and have a 4.7 out of five star rating on their website. They also say they're committed to improving their customer's experience. No one, moral story, no one should be going to jail over dealing with their business. If that's the case, even if it happens one time, that's too many times. Like think of any situation you could be in where you go to a business and you do business with them, you purchase something that they're selling you and that thing makes you go to jail. Imagine going to a donut shop, you buy a donut, you walk out with a box of donuts and then police are arresting you now. <laughs> like that's, that's, you lose your job, you ruin your credit, your entire life is flipped upside down. This is absolutely insane. This should not be able to happen. These are the type of businesses that I mean need to fail. This is what I mean, we need to, in capitalism, you need to have uh, winners and losers. The losers lose 
only because their ideas aren't good and they aren't or they aren't good at executing those ideas the winners win because their ideas are the best and they are actually delivering the value that they say they will deliver there shouldn't be any government involvement as far as actually implementing the business but there needs to be government involvement when it comes to recourse for the consumers that become damaged from dealing with your company. This is, this is too crazy. This is crazy. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm going to try to woosa and calm down right now. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.